y- 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 stupid place <coughs> by yourselves? Asked Trixie, staring up in awe of the Cutie Mark Crusaders clubhouse as they walked into it. Mainly Apple Bloom. Says Scootaloo, smirking to her friend. And it was already here. Sis just gave it to us. Said Apple Bloom. But when we got it, it was kind of... Condemned? Scootaloo finished. Trixie, <clears throat> Trixie raised a brow. That bad? Uh, that bad? Yeah, but we fixed it up good as new. Now this is where we plan how we'll get our cutie marks. Announced Sweetie Belle. Trixie sees. Trixie replied, looking at the wall, seeing a poster labeled. A list of things we've tried to get our cutie marks. Hanging. Hang gliding, driving, dancing, baseball, tennis, mountain climbing, ninja... Ninjas? <laughs> she read. My, you certainly have tried a lot of things. She said and saw another poster reading. <laughs> List of places we've been banned from for trying our, to get our cutie marks. <laughs> it was unnervingly long. <laughs> So, what's on the agenda today? Oh, well, we were gonna, gonna try tra- time travel using this flux capacitor from Dr. Hoob's scrap pile. Said Apple Bloom. But he sold it to that Wonderbolt with the crazy white hair. And when we asked him about it, he said, no, not again, for some reason. Continued Sweetie Belle. Which is weird, because we've never tried time travel before. (laughs) Finished Scootaloo. Maybe we already went back in time and he stopped us from doing it again. Asked Apple Bloom. But wouldn't that mean he wouldn't need to stop us so he wouldn't stop us and then we'd do it anyway and he'd have to stop us? Said Sweetie Belle. But then he'd still have no reason to stop us in the first place. Scootaloo cringed and held her head. Ow, stop. You're making my head hurt. Trixie... (coughs) Trixie just gave a raised eyebrow. All right, so what shall we do now? Well, we could read comic books. I'll go try being Cutie Mark Crusader Surfers. Said Scootaloo, thinking it out. But you've already got your Cutie Mark, so I guess that wouldn't work too well. Hey, that's an idea. What? Trixie, maybe you could tell us how you got your cutie mark. Suggested the white unicorn filly. Trixie blinked. You you really want to know how Trixie got her cutie mark? She asked. No one never has ever asked. Of course we do. Said Sweetie Belle, smiling widely. We love hearing about how ponies got their cutie marks. Scootaloo continued. Yeah, ain't nothing more special than how you got your cutie mark. Well, except friends, but you already are a friend. (coughs) Apple Bloom finished. (sighs) Trixie nodded, blushing a little at being called her friend. All right, please gather round then. She stated, the three pulling up chairs and sitting to watch. Trixie looked a little self-conscious, but still enjoyed having the eyes on her. All right, first, Trixie must let you know that all this started. Why she got into magic in the first place? Started a long time ago at the Summer Sun Celebration in Canterlot. Trixie's father took her there to see Celestia raise the sun. It was so breathtaking. Trixie realized at that moment Trixie wanted to make spectacles 
as uh, it skipped again. Trixie wanted to make spectacles of her own, so she began studying stage magic to become a magician. That sounds familiar. Whispered Sweetie Belle, scratching her head only for Scootaloo to shush her. Trixie used her magic to put a projection of events into view for them for them to help tell the story. Even though she reverted to a child, that didn't change the fact the fact she was good at this kind of thing. Trixie as as a little filly walked the streets of Huffington, her father a large, muscular, dark blue unicorn stallion with a Spartan shield as his cutie mark, walked next to her, an older unicorn filly with a darker uh, with darker fur colors and tricks he walked along with them. One day, while walking with her family, Trixie saw a sign for a local talent show. She'd been practicing magic for a long time. So she felt it'd be the perfect way to finally show off. Trixie looked up, seeing a poster on the door of a theater announcing the Hoofington Junior Talent Show. Teddy, can I try? She asked, excited as ow, 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 as could be, but doing her best to hide it and carry herself with a professional-like air. Her father looked over at the poster not changing his chiseled vi visage one bit. He then gave a small, a very small, barely noticeable smile, if any at all. A good way to prove yourself in the world and become some pony in town. I approve. Trixie gave an excited cry, then noticed a disapproving look from her father. She cleared her throat and bowed to her father. <clears throat> Thank you, Daddy. She said, and trotted into the store, signing up immediately. As she looked back, she saw her sister glaring daggers at her for one moment, but the older filly looked away the moment she noticed Trixie was watching her. Trixie began training immediately. It wasn't an easy task, after all. She had no formal training and mostly just knew simple spells she learned from books. Trixie growled. Mm, none of these spells are good enough. I can't enter a talent show unless what I'm going to do is good. She exclaimed, batting the book off the table and then looking depressed. Trixie didn't take that too well, so she tried looking for other places of inspiration. Trixie climbed up a shelf trying to grab another spell book from the top shelf. She had to balance several books on, on one shelf. Not the one she wanted for a brief moment, the one she was about to get on glow dark violet and moved over. A few inches, the moment she stepped on it, she lost her balance along with the book flailing. She grabbed a book from the bookshelf as she fell to the ground below in an attempt to catch herself. Trixie's sister walked up to her. My, my little sister. You certainly are clumsy, aren't you? You must be careful. We wouldn't want you getting hurt and missing the opportunity of impressing father, would we? She asked before trotting off. Trixie groaned, getting up and looking down at the book she grabbed, which had opened to a passage on Canterlot. She flipped through the book and found an entry on the founding, mm, on the founding of a little town near it. As she read, she got a big smile. It turns out the book had a history lesson that Trixie was especially inspired by. Trixie learned some zebra magic from one who lived in our neighborhood. It, he would become her magic teacher later on. Trixie gulped, waiting for her name to be called so she could do her act. She was shaking in her horseshoes, wearing a homemade version of her hat and cape. Trixie's sister walked up to her. Wow, well, that looks like, look, well, Trixie, it looks like the big night is here. There has to be at least a hundred ponies out there. 
and all their eyes would be on you. Must be a riveting feeling, hmm? Trixie shook, giving a gulp, her irises and pupils becoming pinpricks. At least a hundred? She asked in a frightened, nervous voice. Yes, and Daddy and me will be right in the first row. Her sister stated, giving a cold smile. It'd be horrible if you choked in front of all those ponies, especially Father, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm sure you'll do fine. Break a leg, Trixie. She said, muttering something under her breath as she walked off. Wow, what a bitch. I mean, <clears throat> oh, all in all, Trixie thinks she handled the stress well. Trixie was curled up, trembling in a fetal position in the corner as the contestants were called and did their acts. But having a little guidance didn't help. That didn't hurt. Trixie, what's wrong, sweetie? Asked a, as they caring kind voice, Trixie didn't have to look to recognize it. I was scared, Grandma. She muttered, not moving from her position. Trixie's grandmother, Helena Midsummer, pulled her up gently and sat down next to her. Tell Grandma why you're scared. Trixie didn't stop trembling. There's so many ponies out there, they're all going to be watching me. I don't want to mess up in front of them. In front of Daddy. Helena put a hoof on her back. Dear, there's nothing to worry about. You have shown me your act. You're going to do fine. Trixie started crying. Lana, I don't. I don't want to disappoint Daddy. She exclaimed, looking terrified. Helena looked thoughtful, then got a smile. I think I've got just the thing. She said as she calmly took out a blue crystal from her saddlebags. Here. She said, putting it on Trixie's cape to replace the pin holding the two sides together. It's special. I was going to give it to you for your birthday, but now seems like a better time. Trixie blinked, looking down at it. <laughs> oh, Grandma. It's a good luck charm. My mama gave it to me when I was to Philly. I can't promise you'll come in first, but I can promise you can't mess up while you're wearing this. Mm, that's sweet. Trixie's eyes sparkled as she looked at the little stone. Then up to her, then up to her grandmother. Really? <laughs> really? Said Helena, nuzzling her granddaughter. Don't tell your pop I gave it to you. You know how he gets. We know it's a gift, not me pitting you, but he doesn't. Trixie, is there a great and powerful Trixie here? Called an old mare overseeing the contest. You're up. Said Helena, getting a hug from her granddaughter. Break a leg, all right? Trixie nodded, trotting up to the mare. Here, I... Uh, Trixie is right here. She said, clearing her throat. Trixie had read that referring to oneself in the third person had a more regal and impressive air to it, so she chose to use it in her act. And it sounds cool. Chimed in, sweetie Bell. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Trixie gave one last look back at Helena, who waved her on before heading to her seat. Trixie gulped and took the stage, seeing all the ponies watching her. She saw her sister and father in the front row. Her sister mouthed. That are not so. <coughs> Seems you did take it to heart. Trixie gulped. It took all... It took all her will just to not wet herself from fright right there. Yes, Trixie had stage fright. Trixie knows the irony. But remember, Trixie was a silly at the time. 
It takes time to develop stage presence such as hers. Then she looked down at the jewel her grandmother had given her and steadied herself, looking up at the crowd, seeing Helena sitting in the row behind her father, giving her a smile. Tracy took a deep breath and regained her composure. Gather her round to behold the amazing magic of the great and powerful Tracy. The little blue filly announced, not with as much volume and confidence as she did no, but decently, I think I guess it's supposed to be now. Yeah. <laughs> she set off several fireworks firework style explosions around her. She made the fireworks dance and take on different shapes, though they weren't very fancy or well refined, but fairly good. After Trixie dazzled the crowd with her amazing feats of pyrotechnics, she decided to move on to the grand finale. Trixie reached into a pouch hidden in her cape and produced some green powder, but it hid her hoof from the audience, a trick she'd learned from the zebra. She she shook slightly, but looked at her grandmother's jewel and... S no, sorry, for a second I thought I was reading the same line again. And studied herself again. <laughs> now watch the great and powerful Trixie demonstrate how to fend off a ferocious. Spinning and throwing the powder, causing it to transform into an imperfect but possible illusion of a vicious wolf made out of wood. Timberwolf. Rawr. Stop it. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to that whole worse than mage business you were going on about here? That's Cadapple Bloom. That didn't come until later on. Trixie started with timber woes and did a better job with research back then, as Trixie was saying. <laughs> Trixie made her illusionary beast snarl and approached the edge of the stage, frightening many of the spectators. Beast! Leave those bystanders be. Your fight is with the great and powerful Trixie. The illusion snarled in fury, spinning around and charging at the young filly. Trixie stood her ground and waited. Finally, when it got close, Trixie's horn lit up and a miniature cloud formed overhead. As it leapt at her, the cloud sent off a roar of thunder as she jumped out of the way. The timber wolf illusion howled in pain once, then again as the thunder sounded again, sending it running off where it finally vanished. Trixie turned to the crowd and took a bow as they applauded. A light flashed on her flank and her cutie mark came into being. Um, that's how Trixie got her cutie mark. Yeah. said Trixie, giving a smile, though she was still looking somewhat nervous. <laughs> the story of Ponyville was founded with the Zap Apples and the Timber Wolves actually inspired Trixie's act. The book was on equestrian history, specifically the area around Canterlot. That was actually one of the reasons she visited Ponyville in the first place. The Q-Mar Crusaders were looking at her with jaws dropped in surprise. Trixie looked nervous and fidgeted a little bit. Was it something Trixie said? 